We're looking at today's forecast. We got about six foot waves midday, which is prime, which is what we're looking for. Really, we're just set up for a perfect test environment throughout the day. See all of our systems come up, working together, and just have Ocean 2 in its optimal state. There she is, right there. Everyone wants to find the things that make it so that people have schools and roads and hospitals, food. All of the things that humans need, these things are all driven by energy. The question is, can you find things that are much kinder to the planet and to people? We're just trying to find the things that can really work for humanity. You look out in the ocean and you see these millions of square miles and you start to calculate up how much energy you could go and get. And it's like, wow, a lot more than humans need. Waves are concentrated sunlight. Waves come from wind, wind comes from sun. And by the time it's in the waves, it's such a power dense resource. The seafloor is five miles below you. You're bobbing. How do you take those forces to spin a generator or something like that? I started poking around on YouTube. Wave energy, or attempts to exploit wave energy, did begin a very long time ago. Garth, it turned out, came to the same conclusion. It was waves on the open ocean. There were all kinds of technologies being pursued that were interesting, but they could never scale to provide enough power for the whole world. Most people thought about it in terms of you put something close to shore and you get the energy back on a cable because we need the energy here. We want to get it right where it's being made in the middle of the ocean. That's where it's the best. If you could figure out how to capture that, then that would solve the problem. I went out to LA and we spent four or five hours in a Chick-fil-A. Then we had both agreed at the end to quit our jobs and start this new thing. Garth leased a house a few miles away from my house. We had a big water tank out in the garage. Brian had been developing a prototype, but we didn't understand that the core physics wasn't quite right yet. Even very simple things are very hard to make reliable. So if you complexify it, you're totally done. You're trying to think of something that'll make energy from waves that doesn't have any moving parts. And that's a hard thing to do. Garth was in charge of throwing out very nice ideas because he found some reason they wouldn't work. The next important step was that we hired Dan from SpaceX. He was just this rational engineer. What are you building? The water hammer. Tiny team, super nimble, really scrappy prototyping. It was more like cowboy fun rather than mission driven at the time. There's a picture of this early concept. It looks like some shit you bought, I mean, it was some shit you buy from Home Depot and just like cobble together and test it. Ultimately, that was the basis for everything that we've built up until this point. I'm pretty sure this is one of the first renditions of our current kind of system. What we have here is the world's first spherical piston. This is a sick, sick device. It was very exciting. We were just working all the time. We needed to go and actually build a thing, take it out into the ocean, have the ocean throw at it whatever it would throw at it, and actually have it produce the power that we would predict. Ocean One was the smallest ocean scale system we could build. It was the first time we had sort of taken all the elements of what we had tested individually and said like, okay, let's put our money on the table and hopefully it matches our expectations. Ocean One proved that we could do that. It proved that it made the hydraulic power that we thought it would. Yeah, it was like resounding success. Ocean One, we proved that the shape does in fact work. Now the concepts that you start to prove are things like, can we actually manufacture something this big? When we did Ocean One, we were like 13 people. A lot of the systems were pretty simple, like they were prototype level stuff. So now we go and we hire 50 people more. 
Ocean 2 was an exercise in saying, okay, let's get all of these new people who are amazing, deeply understanding this system, deeply understanding their subcomponent and how it fits into that whole stack and actually putting this thing out to sea. All right, you wanna pop it open a little bit more up there? Yeah. Just felt like real down to earth engineering. Like when you're a kid and you think about engineering, that's what it felt like. We're all about solving problems. Somebody wants to go and solve a different problem they've come up with. Everybody says, cool, let us know if you need help. I mean, it's just fun. This is how we uh, communicate between Ocean 2 and the tugboat. You know, some days Ocean 2 looks really big, other days Ocean 2 looks really small. And so it's, it's neat working on it on the computer and then experiencing it in real life. It's gotta be so simple that it's just a steel can that just moves water around. By moving water around, you can get magic to happen. We've got this tube that's open at the bottom. So when this thing goes up and down, the water in that tube starts moving up and down. There's this crash over and over. And when the water in the tube crashes with this constriction, it generates a high pressure jet of water. So now that high pressure jet of water goes into a pressurized reservoir, and then we can just let the water come out through a turbine. The turbine turns a generator. At that point, it's like a hydroelectric dam. The ocean is one of those places that's still relatively untapped as far as humanity goes. Not much actually operates out there. We're talking about 70% of the planet being covered by water. You can get insane energy extraction where people just don't go. What we're doing is figuring out how to use that power out in the middle of the ocean in a way that makes it so you don't need to make new power plants back on shore. We can do cloud computing, and it's just the same as if you had a data center that was doing it on land. The other possibility is the generation of green fuels, particularly hydrogen. And so we would produce hydrogen locally and then have an off-taking system that would actually bring it back to shore. All of our nodes will be autonomous and eventually all of our ships will be autonomous. And you've got this whole ecosystem that you build out there. Not only can we scale that almost instantaneously, but the cost of it will be dramatically less. We will have the cheapest electrical power on Earth if you truly want to compete at a global level for energy, you have to make it affordable. That's how you get clean energy, is you make the clean energy the best option. You need to get out there and actually put this thing in the water and learn all of the things that you didn't expect. this thing that's 215 feet long. The first reaction is just awe. And then the second reaction is some degree of terror, which is like, oh, my thing is gonna control this. If this fails, my, if my thing fails, then this whole giant device fails. It's baptism by fire or baptism by ocean about how all of these systems come together. I promise you we will learn things. Ocean 2 tug crew, can you hear me? I'm nervous every time we put people on it, especially around the flips. We just got in the water a couple of days ago. Right now it's sitting horizontal. We are going to flip it vertical. Yeah, this is the, this is the beginning. The way the, the way the light's hitting it right now, your toe diamond looks like a bald eagle. Oh, there you go. It does. <laughs> the top three goals for Ocean 2, number one is that nobody gets hurt doing it. Number two is that we don't sing. And number three is that we get there. When things are smaller, you know, scale model, you can grab it and kind of move it. When you're dealing with metal that's at that scale, you have to do the engineering and then trust it. We have permission to play. Uh, okay, six inch cam lock cap is ready. You are clear to open the valve. Once you open the valve, we would expect Ocean 2 to slip vertical in, no, I'm going to say 20 to 30 minutes. All right, Dan, throw the handle and get off.
the number of pieces of magic that we still need keeps declining. It is now 1431. It's been about a minute and a half. Port side cuff line is at 1.5 meter. Cuff is fully submerged. Alright, so we're at the 31 minute mark and this should happen very soon. Oh, there it goes. Hello. We have slippage. Vertical. That tug is going to take it out the street and it'll be out there for three weeks trying to hit a variety of different wave states, generate power from those waves. Hopefully we'll be able to open up the ocean as another energy generating platform for a lot of innovation to come. You go to sleep, you wake up, and the fact that it was still there working, still generating power, that was a big deal. Look out behind at the buoy, you're like, oh, it's just operated. How about that? When it starts really getting in its happy zone, it just bounces real high. <laughs> and the device just kind of leaned over and it was just riding. It was just happy. You don't think it should be making the power that it's making. It looks very benign. Then you have cameras that are seeing what's going on inside, and it's like clearly there's tons of energy that is being driven through the system. We've got these graphs starting to show kilowatts made, and somebody would be like, look at this line! Like it's doing a thing! It's great! We're generating some serious power here. I'm looking forward to taking our learnings from this one and actually building something even better. When people are like, oh, are you excited that it worked? I'm like, no, I expected it to work. We were working with brilliant people. Like, if it didn't work, I'd be more shocked. Seeing Ocean 2 operating out at sea, it was so clear to me that when we build 100 or 1,000, that these are systems that we can deploy rapidly and actually be making a big difference. Our goal is to make terawatts. The entire global electricity supply right now is about three and a half terawatts. We think we can do a significant fraction of that. Sometimes you get lucky and you can have an impact on people you've never met in a good way. That's what I think we're trying to do. Every time I show a video of our device to anyone and I tell them what it does, they're optimistic. They're just like, I'm glad that people are doing this. It gives me hope that we can actually do this. The scale at which we're doing it gives me hope that this is a feasible solution. The ambition is to replace all fossil fuel generated power and fuel with renewable power and fuel. As far as I know, our technology is the first one that can do that for the whole world. So that's kind of cool.